Thank you for joining us on this episode. We're talking about the protests in Nigeria right now. Those who want to protest their protest were not all be there eating. Am I right? Those who want to protest their protest were not all be there eating. Am I right? And last week we talked about it. Somebody came on our video and made a comment saying shame on us for for encouraging protests. And the funny thing is that we didn't even encourage that there should be protests. That there should, he said for encouraging protests where we are away from the country and we're encouraging people to go out into the streets. We didn't encourage that. And I asked him to please watch the video again and listen. But the question really is, what I think that we should ask ourselves is, even if that were the case, if I had actually come out with anybody else and said, let us protest against what's happening. Can you tell me what is wrong with that? Is that right or wrong? Knowing that the situation is that we're in a very difficult situation right now, very painful situation in Nigeria. Should we keep quiet for the sake of peace because we don't want to lose lives? Should we keep quiet so that things continue that way? If we keep quiet, is anything going to change? Because with all the talks that there have been, we've seen that the government officials don't seem to really care because they're still going about life business as usual, spending money recklessly, carelessly, and talking about there being no money in the coffers of the country. So is it is it the best thing to do in a situation like this to be quiet? I mean, I really want to hear from, from you. Give us your opinion in the comments. I want to hear from you guys too. What do you think about that kind of statement that you are aware and you're encouraging people to go out into the streets to make noise? What do you think? To, to risk lives and to destroy things. What do you think about a situation like this? Oh, oh sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, I listened to a little bit of part of the, your conversation from the first recording. Mm. Um, let me come down to the very lowest level everybody can understand. If I am okay, I eat fine. I don't think I'll cause trouble. I don't think, I think I'm just comfortable. That when something threatens my comfort zone, maybe I might adjust a little bit, just accommodate that and hoping it will change. Now, if it adds a little bit more pressure to my comfort zone to a point that I cannot even eat, Let's say a hungry man is an angry person. A hungry man is an angry man. You know, politicians have made it so that protests has become something evil because it's against their ploy. No. If you have to take away my comfort, I have to come looking for it. Because if you leave me alone, I will leave you be. But that's just on the ordinary. And this is what exactly is going on with Nigerians. They've had enough. Every new stage of government always comes with one promise or the other, which of course is never kept. All to the detriment of fellow Nigerians. No. I will be one of those that will say, I encourage whatever it takes to take back my liberty, my comfort from those that are trying to steal it. Even the Bible says it, that the kingdom of God suffered violence <laughs> and only the violence can take it away from it by force. God made this world his first tool and the evil is trying to use evil men to take away the joy and peace that has been given to people like me and you. And you're telling me to keep quiet? No, I won't keep quiet. Because when you destroy my world, I am the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. This is Psalm 23. For I am part of God's kingdom. So who are you to come and take <laughs> it away? Well done, Sonny. I like that too, because that's the way that I think. That is the way that I think. I love the way that you're drawing, drawing those um, things together. Adrian, what do you want to say? So this person, uh, first of all, he didn't listen to our conversation because <laughs> if he did, he wouldn't come out and say we were investigating in Nigeria. And, and if we were, are we, are we out of our boundaries? Almost every other week, I get text messages. Calls from people back home. Please, I couldn't. I, I, I need to buy rice. 
please, my children have not eaten today. These are not women who are asking for help. These are men who have forgotten about, they don't care about their eating, they don't care about pride, they need to feed their family. So they are humble enough because they feel you will understand. And they seem to have a sense that because they are across the border, you have some big money to spend. And they are reaching out to you for help. At times, they can't buy drugs. I mean, someone reached out for 3,000 naira, 3,000 naira to buy an iPhone. And this person is working, has a job. <laughs> I was talking to the person, the, you know, to the person taking care of things back home. I said, how much is the leg of goods now? I said, when I left in May, we were spending 10,000 naira to buy a lot of goods. How many, how, how big is the cup of food that I'm going to cook? You need to augment with the workshop. Let me get down to you, I mean, my Okay, I'm Jerry. I'm not, I'm at least three today. Don't. You cannot carry it. It's just that 70,000 naira that they say is minimum weight. What can it buy? And then you tell me that I don't have a right to protest. I don't have a right to speak my mind because I'm abroad. Does it affect me? Don't I have family back home? Don't, don't, I mean, you, first of all, I hope he listens to this. And let him come after me, I'm ready. So I don't have a right to say my mind. I should just keep quiet. Why when I when I burning down. Because when I burning, so um don't you think that what happens with some people is it's either two things, that's what I was thinking that maybe this person when people have an issue with people talking about protests, what comes to my mind is either the person is because the only thing the person said was you are instigating people to protest. Person didn't say anything about why don't you why don't we do it this way? Person is only concerned about people protesting. So it just tells me that there's a possibility that anyone who is against with protesting is either benefiting from it one way or the other or likes the fact that these people are in government and so they don't want anything to disrupt, disrupt that or they don't care about the pain of the people expressing their discomfort. So oh, they are benefiting from the government. Yeah, that was the first oh, thing. <laughs> well, that was the first thing. Yes, or maybe their people oh, are, are in the government. Paid. Yes. So, um, so I think that the main conversation really is, if really, really, for me, I would approach it this way. Like what you said, Tony. Let me even start from there. To me, this is like just imagining. Okay, let me play this. Just imagining. Look at this. I've been saying there is hunger. Nigerians, because this looks like we are um, the Nigerians. Wow. Fellow Nigerians, I've been saying there is hunger in the land. Mm. This has been corroborated by Medicines on Frontier, Doctors Without Borders. They are raising the alarm that in northern Nigeria they have seen 200% spike in, in the number of patients, number of children admitted for malnutrition. malnutrition. This in the last year. Fellow These are Niger Nigerian kids, prof. They are Nigerians. Wow. I'm a doctor, and we see that every doctor will tell you this is what we see in our hospitals. This is marasmus. This is heart wrenching. Right. In a country where we are not at war, yeah. where you see this in the Sudan, in Yemen, in this, but we see this. We are increasingly seeing this. Medicines on Frontier, Doctors Without Borders, they are raising alarm. I want to prick the conscience of all our leaders. Mm -hmm. From the president, governors, and members of our National Assembly, we cannot, we cannot. So I, that is actually hell on earth. That is hell already on earth for people, because this person or people who are who people who have an issue with people protesting, I don't understand what you want people to do. Because honestly, for me, if if other Nigerians have the kind of mind that I have, I usually look at things like this thing is so bad that I'd rather die. There's no point living like this because you saw those children. I don't know how are they supposed to be. Are those children in Nigeria? They're in Nigeria. 
the Nigeria I will... No, they're in, they're in Nigeria in a country that doesn't have people fighting on the streets with guns in a country where people are where we're not dropping bombs and Detonating bombs and killing killing hundreds of people as, as a go with so soldiers in the bushes in a country that is supposed to not be at war But that is a war situation right there in that country it's just that people are not calling it war. Don't you think so? I think that Nigeria has been at war for over 10 years. That is what I've been saying. For, know, for more than 10 years. Even besides that, just the hunger itself is war. It's a, it's a war situation. So to me, a lot of things are like, it's already hell on earth. It's hell in the place. So what is the essence? What, what am I even living for if I'm going to... This is not life. I might as well die for it. But even when I say that... I actually do not want the idea of people getting into the streets and losing their lives. It has to be. That. Yes. And that, and that's why I said that that's not even what our conversation was. We actually talked about that thing last week. We said if we want to protest, we should protest because if you don't protest, the person who is doing what he's doing continues doing what he's doing. So you need to protest. It's the same thing that I say about your relationships. You need to speak out. You can't keep quiet and allow the thing to continue. So, but how do you protest now? You don't go out there and lose your lives. Because you lose your lives, it doesn't give you what you need. Unless you're just ready to, let me just die because I'm not, you know. But first, before you do that, is to strategize, right? It's to strategize and see what can we do to make the person who is punishing me to stop punishing me if you don't make the plan then you can't get it but for someone to come and say we shouldn't protest it just it, there's no sense in that are we supposed to keep quiet and just continue living like that yeah. huh? so for instance actually wait it is right to have the stand with the people that can speak for you because the law you sign is against you and not protect. So stand with the civilians, stand with the people who don't protect against you. Sure, sure, sure. Stand with the people who don't protect against you. Can you guys hear this? Stand with the people. 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 That. Did you that. did you hear that? Tony, are you there? That's wonderful. And you know the funny thing, just last week it just occurred to me like, come, wait. What because if people go out to protest, the police and army are the ones who are going to do the shooting. But what would happen if the police and army don't shoot? What would happen if on that day they down those weapons and turn around and carry placards? And face the government's house because they are hungry because they are hungry so it's actually in our it's actually in our hands so it's actually in our hands do you understand how power can be in your hands and yet but the reason why the people would want to shoot the people who are going to shoot their, their fear their fear will be if i don't do it it's like a child that somebody is um, abusing and tells the child don't tell your parents because if you do i will do this to you you don't process this far enough to know that this is what is going to get you out of that abuse it is telling your parents once you tell the parents you take the power from that person you take the power from that person so you have the guns they don't have the guns they're not going to come and start shooting us but once we the police and army decide we are not even going to attack the people that are protesting let's join them instead and all of us turn around and face the government house there's no need for for me and you to be afraid 
uh, let me do this because if all of us but I know kind of it sounds like I, I'm dreaming but that's the thing with life the power can be in I your think, hands I think most yes. of this our talk mm. most of this our chat has to be directed also to the forces you know those I mean the fact that they swore an oath this one oath to protect yes, that's one right. the service of the nation and then to the people so they owe their allegiance one to the government to, to, to who the are the people they owe their allegiance to the country and the I government know, is not the country, country before the but people but no the government is not the country is that the people are the country exactly you know i remember like i mean there are a lot of instances but even covid itself was a primal um, example because this is where a very few tries to subdue a majority and they will do anything and use any power any authority to perpetuate that plan to make sure that that plan comes to you know comes to light and so they use doctors they use they use everything they use uh, the, the cops the, uh, the military whatever they can to make sure that they carry out their plan meanwhile if all these people refuse to cooperate they can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, but they are subject to authority. Let's not let let them not take that out. The policeman <laughs> has a boss. Mm -hmm. a That's mm -hmm. the army man has a boss. Has a job. Mm -hmm. They have a job. They they swore an oath. You know. Um that video says a lot about and I you know, they also feel the pain. They also feel the pain. Mm -hmm. so they're sworn. They're between their allegiance to the government, their allegiance to their bosses, and the people. <laughs> Voice of conscience over their job, over just normal order. If I'm told to shoot this person, would I shoot the person because I'm given the order to just shoot? Or should I understand why I need to shoot this person? This is what every law enforcement person should be asking themselves. But, but here is the thing, it needs planning because if even if all of them in their homes, sit in their homes and they think to themselves, I would rather not shoot people, I would rather disobey this order so that we can have what we need, they, they all need to be taken in by different, different factions. People, it's almost like a coup, right? It's almost like a coup. Um, it will have to be we're going to have to talk to these people somebody's going to have to be in charge and say to this number of people this is what you're going to do and different different groups have to now be in different different camps and overseen by somebody who is telling them what to do and they're all going to be in agreement because we can't sit in our homes and say when i go out there i won't shoot if I'm the one who refuses to shoot and the next and the other people go and do the shooting, then I'm going to lose my job at the end of the day. So we need to really go back to the drawing board to plan and strategize how it's going to be. Because I see people on the streets, all that isn't, um, we can make noise, we can do all that uh, to show our... Uh, To say that we are wasting our time by doing those things but really after all that it's the same thing as even when we didn't come out on the streets everybody knows that we are hungry we are unhappy we are dying you know so but what is going to give us results this can happen i'm sure this can happen for a while but after this it can't end there if we don't get results and we're not going to get results because see when people actually know if i know that i'm doing this thing to you and you are dying and you don't do anything about it what i i'm already doing it because i have the power to do it so something has got to be done i have to get your word for it that it has to stop and are you someone that i can take your word for it we have to get as far as getting the answer getting the action getting the thing to start being in place i hear i think you were saying that uh, tinubu is going to address the, the country on I monday think addressing the nation tomorrow morning by tomorrow 
okay tomorrow so he's going to talk about what he's going to do to change the situation but uh, i let's not, pre let's not preempt them let's it's go. always the same talk you are, well, we can preempt it well i can preempt it maybe let's leave you out of it so that you are safe from not preempting him but i can definitely preempt him 150 percent because i don't um i mean do you know how old i am I believe the life where I understand that if somebody is telling me something over and over, it makes no difference until you actually do it. Doesn't matter how many promises you give me because I can end up getting to 70 and 80. I will never have the conclusion or the manifestation of what you're promising me if you, if you don't do it. So I really care nothing about what you say, especially when it's someone who, before they came into government, before they ran the elections and came out as president, they had already promised something. It makes no difference. Uh, it's, it's, it's being a dreamer. Being a dreamer is what keeps you in punishment in perpetuity. Do you understand? It's the same thing as, I think Samson is going to become my favorite person to be using as an example now. Somebody has shown you over and over. Delilah has shown you over and over that she cannot be trusted. Then the next time you go again, what do you say about the person who does the same thing over and over and over, the same thing and expecting, the same, and expecting a different result? What do you say, say about the person? Use your tongue to count your teeth. You say you've not heard me speak. <laughs> yeah, use your tongue. Use your tongue to count your teeth. I'm sure I've said that here before. They're giving, they're giving uh, conditions. They're giving him yeah, no deal. That's it. If you don't do this, we're not going to stop the process. So I want to see what he wants to say at 7 a.m. tomorrow. If he's going to end 12 subsidies, if he's going to say, okay, I bring back 12 subsidies, if he's going to reduce the pump price to 155 back to what he's going to do, if he's going to take out, you know, and reduce the electricity tariff, let, let me wait. Let, I, I, Okay, for your sake, we can wait for tomorrow. Yeah, for your sake, we can wait for tomorrow. But after tomorrow, which I know is going to also fail, then what next? Because when when a man is holding on to a woman and it's five years now, and it's seven years and ten years and he's promising marriage and marriage doesn't come, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come down and agree to the conditions, then the protest should continue. And I think see, this this is my uh, this is my uh, my own take on this. I'm not talking about people that want to come over and talk. I'm just talking to everybody that is concerned about what is not right regarding this situation going on. If you are part of government, what is government? Who is that government? So you don't waste your time, you please. Are part of that government? <laughs> if you work oh in gosh. any office. If you have any aspect of authority, just know that you are government. And whatever you throw out there, just know that it's going to boomerang back. So think about whatever office of trust that you have and how to serve the people. Because you can't be over there and come out and say, oh, government did this. No. Just know that in that little office, whether you're a guard in the office, whether you're a writer in the office, whether you suggest something in the office, anything or act you do, if you let the part that you're in office get into your head to just to write on somebody, mm -hmm. you have become that government that you dread, that you didn't like. It's only now. And so if we have to carry these things, whether you're a police officer, a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, Whatever aspect of um, 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 government's work that you are doing, just remember, I want to do this for my kid, for my uncle, for my daughter, for my sister. If you think like that, you are serving the people good. You are representing the people that you're supposed to represent. I'm actually so baffled. It goes on like that, even up to the Senate, to the President. But if we don't, and we think government is just the president we are making the mistake because the third majority of votes not got sometimes the, uh, the president has no power over to third majority of the go, uh, votes that's from the senate so let's have this in mind that if you represent yourself and be a good government the next person will be so do you know and we can gradually change our country no but do you not 
Do you know what? So as not to, uh, I, I mean, I, okay, let me not say so as not to. I wish I, I didn't sound like such a, a, a doomsday prophet. But um, I think that anybody who is going into a, 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 a sensitive position, let's just be, these are not children. They're not kids. If I was going into something like that, I would know already that if I'm going there, I'm going to have to, anywhere you go, you have to speak the language of, that the people around you will understand. So there's only so much that you can do if you're not like them. Because even if you decide not to be like them, they're going to be afraid of you showing them out or showing them up. So you are going to be gotten out of the way. Do you understand? So you mean, it's almost like when you're going there, you have to have made up your mind that I'm going to have to bow to the gods that these people are serving. That's just the truth. And that's why we don't have things working like this. So for me to come out now and be telling them when you are there, do this, do that. Everybody already knows what they should do and what they shouldn't do. They just won't make the choice because of what they have at stake. And the other alternative is to completely bow out of it. But people want what they want. But just to say to get this advocate, Nigerians and Nigerians problem. The security guard who will tell you that it is to be safe, that it is to be safe to submit your CV for a job, you must settle him. He is the problem. The nurse that you come into the hospital and sit down and does not get up to attend to patient hmm. when she is being paid for that job, she is the problem. Another conversation. Nigerians need a complete reorientation. Uh -huh. We all need get so much settle me, settle me, settle me culture. From That's the, another from conversation. The bottom, all right. From the, the bottom, it, it should be addressed. Okay, and so get up and say end God, end by government, end by government. If you get into power today, you that you are placed to be self righteous, wouldn't you do the same thing? It's you we're asking. <laughs> it is you and we're asking. You are and I. It is you and I that we're asking. So I don't I don't know if we if we actually have the license or if we are even if we actually um, worthy of having that conversation. You know as everybody is ba -ba 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 -ba. you know in the midst of this three day strike that has happened in these three days, do you know people had parties? That's all. Do you know the do you know parties that were scheduled for today? They went on. Do you know people dressed for entered rooms and went to this party? The vendors, where did they get this? Did they go to market? The vendors went on with their business. Okay, we should talk about that as another episode. But what I'm trying to say is the, the, those who don't feel bothered, hmm. those who are able to eat three square meals, mm -hmm. those who are able to buy the yam at 7,000 naira and buy the bag of rice at whatever price. They won't, they won't go out and join this because they're not bothered. Mm -hmm. It's a unified voice. It is not a unified voice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we have to take those into consideration as well. The sacred cows are the ones that go out in the forefront. I think we don't want to benefit the whole nation. Yeah. And that's why that may not be the way to go unless it's um, properly, properly structured. I mean, I don't know so much about those things. I haven't done those things before, but the people who know what to do, I'm sure that eventually and maybe i could even be involved one way or the other who knows right so anyway let's end that conversation and um this thing that you just raised now is another interesting part that some of us are going to sit down in their home and they feel you know it, it, it's not my problem it doesn't bother me okay all right but my dear if you are a one-eyed man and you are the one earning the highest in your family and you are giving to everybody and everybody is coming to meet you. Let me tell you, you are 44. Sad. Okay, well, thank you for being with us on this um, topic. Um, it's our country. Let's keep hoping for for a plan that we that we can come up with that will help us to arrive at the destination that we are hoping for, because we can't really continue like this. I I think. Every time, every day, it, it looks like it can't get worse, and then it just keeps getting worse. So I don't know. To me, I'm sure that that place is hell, and I'm beginning to to see it as not not even better than hell. You can't be better than hell. There's no way you can be better than hell for for many people. So this is something that really has to come to an end. Otherwise, that country, and I don't know. And the thing that keeps puzzling me is 
these people who continue to do this and continue to, to plunder the money, what are they doing with? Who are they going to impress? Because they are, it's all the same people who have the money. So who are they going to impress at the end of the day? They're not going to impress me if I'm too hungry. So it's just uh, incredulous. Well, with that, we end this episode. Thank you for being with us. All right. First thing you want to do is to regain your heart. And it takes two to have. Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck.